Good morning, Nina. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday, August 2nd. That happens to be my sister's birthday. Happy birthday, Kathy. Okay, we have a cool 63 degrees. Not bad for an August start. We appreciate you joining us because the next 30 minutes, we've got news, weather, sports, and a special guest um, that we're really excited about today. And uh, we just hope that you grab a cup of coffee and join us. And um, we're live streaming around the globe. We want to say hi to all of our military friends and families around the globe that watch us via the internet. And we're coming to you live on cable television right here in Enid, Oklahoma. This is Good Morning Enid. It is time to rise and shine. Good morning, Enid. Thanks again for joining us today. It is absolutely gorgeous out right now. As I was walking to my car, it is sunny and beautiful and 63 degrees. Did you take the long way to your car? I did, actually. I walked, <laughs> I walked around the block a few times and got to my car. Um, tonight's, or today's going to get to a high of 94, so it's going to get up there. Uh, tonight's low is 69 degrees. Winds are 5 miles an hour to 10 miles an hour, so not super windy today, but sunny skies, so enjoy this morning while it lasts. You know, I did the same thing out on the farm this morning. I just, when I opened the garage door, I just stood out. And of course, it's just quiet out there on the farm. But I just stood there in the cool air for a moment. So <laughs> I imagine a lot of people did that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's, how are you, Sarah? I'm very good, thank you. And definitely enjoying this nice um, weather this morning. Yesterday was also really nice. And I was out of town last weekend and I heard the weather was really nice. Um, so I'm back now, so I guess that means the bad weather is back. I don't know. <laughs> uh, here it is. Uh, this weekend looks like it's going to be partly cloudy, um, but definitely going to be in the high 90s. Um, so it's going to be a definitely a warm weekend. Um, there is a connection. When you're back in town, the temperature <laughs> goes up. So, Well, let's take a look at 732 this morning. Let's take a look at uh, the weather on this day. Let's go back. You know, I heard yesterday it was 120 degrees in Death Valley, California, so it could be hot. So anyway, the records here in Enid, Oklahoma. Let's go all the way back to 1910, 109 degrees, which, you know, that makes sense. But wow, a low of 58 degrees back in 1925. So those were the special high and lows on this day in history in Enid, Oklahoma, way back then. Well, again, we're excited that you're joining us. Show number 180, and uh, we appreciate you joining us every Thursday morning for Good Morning Enid. Well, if we want to find out what happened, there's a lot of things going on in the world of sports and news. We turn to one guy, and that's uh, Derek Silas with the bow tie, or excuse me, the bow tie guy, and he has the Oklahoma Minute. The NBA and WNBA will now share official data with MGM Resorts International, officials announced Tuesday, becoming the first major U.S. professional sports league to cut a deal with a casino. And a massive wildfire continues to rampage through Northern California, torching more than 1,000 homes in and around the city of Redding. California's Redding fire is now considered the sixth largest in state history. In state news, University of Oklahoma meteorologist has been chosen to be President Donald Trump's top science advisor, and driver's license offices across Oklahoma will, will still be unable to issue new ID cards after system failure. They can, however, issue replacement and renewal licenses and IDs. And on this day in history, in 1971, the Nixon administration officially announces that the CIA is maintaining a force of 30,000 mountain tribesmen to fight a secret war against the communists and to sever the trail into South Vietnam. And that's the Oklahoma Minute. Very good. Thank you very much for that information, Derek. Like always, you have so much knowledge and wisdom you like to share with us every Thursday. You, you feel so smarter thank you. Now? Yes, I, I do. I don't. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's good. <laughs> well, we do want to take the time to um, specifically wish um, Kathy a happy birthday. Um, so She's my much older sister, by the way. 
Yes. And Happy birthday, Kathy. And Kathy watches us. She watches us live streaming every week. So we appreciate that. She lives over in the Morrison area, big city of Morrison. So she watches every week. So Very good. Very good. We also have Noah, um, who I'd say had a very, um, very um, awesome uh, experience, I guess, <laughs> accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about it, Aaron? Yeah. Meat. He uh, was at the National Junior Olympic over in North Carolina this point, past point weekend. Point him out for us, Aaron. He's the one on the farthest <laughs> left. He got seventh okay. place. He got just about six, seven, six feet, seven inches. So he did pretty in well. High jump. Okay. Yep. And then I think this weekend, he, or this week, he was also in Iowa and got second place in another Junior Olympics competition. That is awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. congratulations, Noah. Good job. <laughs> yes, great job. And like you've seen this morning, um, we definitely like to share with you if there's anything you'd like to share. So please email um, gme at ena.org if there's any pictures, comments, questions, or suggestions you have for us. Um, we'd love to share them here. Um, also, if you're looking for anything great to do this weekend, since it's going to be a partly Hot. cloudy weekend, <laughs> <Hot> um, <laughs> here is Erin to let you know what's happening. Thanks, Sarah. Well, if you were with us a couple of weeks ago, we had Paula Huckabee on here talking about the walk to end Alzheimer's, and that is this weekend. It's tomorrow night starting at 6 p.m., and the walk starts at 7 p.m. It's at the Garfield County Courthouse Lawn. Uh, there is going to be vendors, a DJ, and you can register on site if you haven't already registered. Um, free to walk, but donations will definitely help. Last time I checked, yesterday about afternoon, like 3 or 4, there's $53,385 raised. So it's definitely for a great cause because it is the sixth leading cause of death, if you remember watching the show a couple weeks ago. So definitely a great cause. It'll be fun. And it's also during the same time as First Friday, which is this Friday, starting at 6 p.m. and going till 9 p.m. or later. Um, it's a tax-free weekend on clothing and shoes under $100, and there's live music at five different locations, which you can check out at MainStreetUnion.org if you want to know the locations and which bands are playing. There's also a bunch of stores and restaurants that are open late for this occasion. And if you're a big fan of uh, Frozen or Moana, they will have a photo op with them at ABC Exchange, so the kids will definitely enjoy that. And then finally, on Saturday night, we have Outlaw Willie and the Free Fallen Band, a tribute to Tom Petty. It's at 8 p.m. for all ages at Moose Lodge. It's $15 at the door, and all the, a portion of the proceeds will benefit the, lodge, the Lodge's nine, or 1740s Heart of the Community efforts, which is a program that supports veterans with an emphasis on their ongoing service to their communities. And this uh, band is actually touring all around. They've been in Missouri, Arizona, and Oklahoma, so it'll definitely be fun to check them out. And that's what's happening this weekend. That's a long laundry list. Yeah. <laughs> we got all kinds of options. At 737 on this Thursday, August 2nd, thank you for joining us. Good morning, Enid. And um, as Aaron said, uh, this Friday is the, the walk to end Alzheimer's and um, Paula Huckabee, as you've referred to, mm -hmm. was our special guest. Was it last week? It might. A couple weeks? I think it was two weeks ago. Okay. I think it's two anyway, weeks ago. Uh, we still have that on our social media. You can go to uh, Enid or the... Um, in a television network uh, Facebook account, and you can see those interviews regarding uh, Alzheimer's, so we encourage you to do so. Well, again, 1st of August, not bad at 63 degrees, which cool air reminds me of Sarah's favorite subject and topic, which is football, <laughs> is coming up. We have a special guest joining us today to talk a little bit about football um, back then and also now here on Good Morning Enid, so uh, we'll be right back after this little video clip. It's 739 on this Thursday. We're working our way up to a warm 94 degrees, which would be a typical August temperature. And um, our special guest today is um, Coach Kyle Davis. 
Uh, Coach Davis is uh, reigns from Altus, Oklahoma, and uh, he was All-American down at the University of Oklahoma, and also played football for the 49ers, Dallas Cowboys, a variety of other teams. Coach Davis, welcome to Good Morning Nina. Appreciate you being here. And we will just continue to put all the blame on Coach Steve Hayes because he was insistent to, to get you here. It wasn't all about this Steve, okay? It was okay. the other Steve that wanted you here. But we're, we appreciate you being here. Welcome back home to Oklahoma, by the way. Thank you. And to get ready, tag team right here with Sarah. So. <laughs> Good morning, Coach Davis. It's morning. an honor to have you here this Thank morning. Um, I know that uh, you're obviously very familiar with football. Um, it's something that you've done uh, for a long time. Uh, do you happen to have like a favorite coach or someone that you look up to? Um, I enjoyed Coach Switzer when I was at OU. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, he was a special man. He, he came in at a time when we had been put on probation. He was a tremendous motivator. He was young. He was inspiring. And uh, he got his head in the right direction doing what we needed to be doing with the talent we had. And I was fortunate the last couple decades to, uh, to be involved with uh, Special Olympics Oklahoma. And, of course, Barry Switzer was a big part of that. So I got to experience from a d different perspective of what the heart of Coach right. Switzer, which is really nice. Well, Coach Davis, um, tell us about, uh, if you can, uh, your favorite memory as a Sooner. I think the best thing about having played there was the family atmosphere that we had. Uh, the coaches were young, they were enthusiastic, they brought their kids and their wives to practice. It was truly a family atmosphere and, and, and kind of set the stage for how I like to have uh, interaction with kids and coaches. Uh, it was just, it was a feel good type of place. Okay. Kyle, we have, we have a video clip that we want to show everybody this morning and it goes back to uh, your playing days with the Dallas Cowboys and it'll pin up, have that running for us here in a few moments. Why don't you do a little play-by-play -play for us here? This is the Hail Mary pass, but this is that, that drive for that, well, and you were a center at the time. And Yes, I had just come into the game on this play. It was fourth and 17, and, and Roger throws an out route to Drew Pearson for a first down. Uh, we go back in the huddle, and Drew says, I can get deep on them. And Roger says, well, I'll come back to you in a minute. Uh, let's go to the left side for just one second. And, of course, the, the next play is the Hail Mary pass. And, and you're the center, so you're hiking the ball to Roger. Yes, sir. It's uh, Roger called a protection, uh, kind of a max protect up front where he could uh, and, and the Vikings were playing more coverage at this time, not, not bringing a lot of pressure. And, uh, so it looks like I'm doing nothing, which I was. But I was good at that. <laughs> and so here on this picture, Kyle, you're the center, number 57, yes, front and center, getting ready to hike the ball. Uh, you're just thinking doing your job, right? Or what's, yes, what's well, the thought? As I say... Uh, <laughs> you know it's a big play. Every play's a big play. Uh, <laughs> but um, late in the game, it's... But, but we trusted what we were doing. Uh, and, and as I say, Roger called a protection. I had to get out of there in case somebody came hard off the uh, left side of our offense and uh, we had a back coming in to protect the right side and other than that it was just everybody do your job if everybody does their job good things happen yeah and we'll see you come running into the picture here in just a few moments uh, can you recall that moment any Absolutely. thoughts I just knew we was had it yesterday did it seem like <laughs> yesterday <laughs> it's another lifetime ago yeah. uh, that was kind of a uh, you don't really think about the history of it. It's just sure. like you're in the moment. Okay, there's 30 seconds left. We're about to win this game. But you can't get too involved in the celebration because at that point it's 16 to 14. We still have to kick the extra point because Fran Tarkenton's over there and he could take them down to get a field goal in that last 25, 30 seconds. So if we don't have the extra point, we still could have gotten beat 17 yeah. to 16. Well, I'm three years out of high school, and I remember watching this game on, on our television because, you know, I was a big Vikings fan at the time and all. But I, I just love pro football. So what's fun for me is all these years later, I'm thinking, wow, I remember that play. I remember <laughs> sitting there and watching my TV and saying, oh, my word, he caught it, you know. So that's exciting. Sounds pretty exciting, yes. <laughs> I was not there to watch the game, but <laughs> it was definitely great to see the clip this morning. Um, so I really like how you said every play is um, is hard play. It, it's, it's a important. big play. It's a big. That's correct. Um, so I, I kind of like that passion that you reflect. Can you tell us a little bit about how has the game changed or challenged you in college or professional football? The game's changed more from a rules standpoint. What you're able to do. Uh, they they're trying to make the game safer and. 
uh, just the particularly in professional football things had changed back when when I was playing we didn't really have access to medical records they sent you to a doctor or they gave you medicine out of the training room and so forth um, today you know the players make so much money and they're so valuable to the franchises they have you know they feed them lunch they have nutritionists and doctors and dietitians and everything in the world going on uh, but because it's such a large entertainment industry and everybody's important to them at this point. Good morning, Nina. It's uh, 7.45 on this Thursday morning, August 2nd. And again, if you're preparing the day <clears throat> wardrobe-wise, it's going to be a hot one, high around 94 degrees. Our very special guest is Kyle Davis, um, also uh, new to Enid, if you will, and um, coaching with the, one of the assistant coaches with the Plainsman, which leads into my question, Coach Davis, what brings you back to Oklahoma? I guess football, coaching, teaching, all of the above? All of the above. Um, my dad, who just turned 90 last month, uh, his family settled up around Cherokee in the run. His okay. grandfather came. And so he has some land over in that area. Uh, it needed a little tending to. I enjoy doing that. And um, Enid was a blessing. Uh, kind of just happened, uh, God's will type of thing, um, because... I was looking to get over this way and for it to be that close to where I was sure. wanting to be anyway, uh, it was just, just a blessing to, to be able to be here. That's great. Um, can you share a story, one of your best stories um, with Tom Laundry? <laughs> uh, yeah. You have to understand pro football at that time was different. The first time I walked into a pro locker room, the thing that threw me was that there was an ashtray on every locker. So guys smoked all the time. And we had a left tackle that graduated from the University of Oklahoma by the name of Ralph Neely. And Ralph was from Farmington, New Mexico. And Coach Landry pulled him aside one day and said, Ralph, you really need to stop smoking. It's going to prolong your life, prolong your career. It'll just be better for you. And Ralph said, well, Tom, uh, I started smoking when I was nine. I started playing football when I was 12, which you think I'm giving up first. <laughs> so, the Landry stories tend to be more sometimes about the guys he's interacting with as opposed to him. <laughs> Best player you ever played against, Kyle? The one or two that come to mind? <laughs> the whole Pittsburgh Steeler team of that era. Uh, I played the Pittsburgh, probably Joe Green right up front. Um, played them in the Chicago All-Star Game, played them in preseason, played them in the Super Bowl, but it was Jack Ham and Joe Green and that whole cadre of what seemed sure. to be Hall of Fame sure. players. We want to do a little word association, and some of the names I'm going to mention, people will be really familiar with Oklahoma football. So let's do a little word association, okay. and you can use more than one word, Coach Thank Davis, you. on this. Um, if I say Barry Switzer, what comes to mind? Great man, great leader, inspirational. Quarterback Steve Davis. Tragic loss early, early, uh, but what a leader, what a tremendous player and tremendous teammate. Do you have a favorite story when you, when you think of Steve Davis? Does anything else come to mind of maybe an interaction, a game, or just a conversation? Well, just, just when he kind of sealed his fate as the starting quarterback at the University of Oklahoma, we were in spring ball practice, and everybody was just, it was one of those 90-plus degree days. We'd been on the field forever. Nobody had any energy <laughs> left. And, of course, we ran the option, and Steve comes out, keeps the ball, makes about a 60- or 70-yard run in a scrimmage, and nobody understood how he could even have the energy to do that. And it kind of picked everyone up. And we knew at that time Steve was the leader. He was the, the go-to guy. He was somebody we could trust and count on. And I'm trying to remember, Steve Davis, where, was, where did he play in high school at? I'm trying to remember. Salisaw. Salisaw, that's right. That's right. Okay, Jewel Washington, first thing that comes to mind. when Greatest ever. Greatest ever. Not a big guy, but he could move sideways. <laughs> and he wasn't really that fast, but he could run the same speed sideways, backwards, karaoke, regardless. I think he could run the same 40 time. Okay, and then my last group is the Selman brothers. Wonderful, wonderful human beings. Um, just down to earth, salt of the earth type people. Very good. Coach Davis, Coach Kyle Davis is our special guest coming back to Oklahoma. And a part of uh, Coach Steve Hayes' team here at the Inner Plainsman. So it's 749, and uh, what's next, Sarah? Well, in case you missed it earlier, we do want to bring back Derek for the Oklahoma Minute.
Thanks, Sarah. The NBA and WNBA will now share official data with MGM Resorts Internationals, according to officials, becoming the first major U.S. professional sports league to cut a deal with the casino. A massive wildfire continues to rampage through Northern California, and this Redding fire is now considered the sixth largest in state history. The University of Oklahoma meteorologist has been chosen to be President Donald Trump's top science advisor. And the driver's license office across Oklahoma are still unable to issue new IDs after a system failure. On this day in history, in 1971, the Nixon administration at officially acknowledges that the CIA is ma maintaining a force of 30 thousand mountain tribesmen to fight a secret war against the communists and to sever the trail into South Vietnam. That's the Oklahoma Minute. Thank you, Derek. It's 7.50 on this Thursday. And uh, again, for our, our friends out at Vance, our winds are out of the south from 5 to 10 miles per hour. And again, a warm day of 94 degrees. Sarah has the three-day forecast for folks that are planning tax-free shopping weekend. That's right. Can't wait, right? Well, actually, it'll, it'll be a perfect time to go tax-free um, yes. shopping. To stay inside? Because you'll be inside. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, it's going to be a partly cloudy um, but pretty warm, uh, hot uh, weekend. So it's definitely a good time to go shop and spend some money and save some money with those tax-free items. So. Yeah, there are a lot of people doing sales, 40%, things of this nature. Yes. Thrills me, that's for sure. Shopping is right up there where I'd like to go. Well, uh, we'd like to remind you next week, or next Tuesday, I should say, we'll have our city council meeting. We've had a couple of weeks off because July had kind of several weeks in there, but we'll return with a city commission broadcast on uh, August 7th, next Tuesday. Study session gets underway at 5 p.m. And then, of course, the council meeting will get underway at 6.30. Again, that will be broadcast live on Channel 12 and also in high definition, 112. And then also we're live streaming all of the... Th program on 12. You go to enatv.org and we're live streaming this show and also all of our city council meetings. It's 7.52 in eight minutes uh, if you're able to stay with us this morning. I had the privilege several months ago to talk with Jim Riley, an Enid high school grad, and also Ken Mendenhall. And we thought since we had kind of a sports football theme this morning, we'd bring back that show and it's called the Plainsman Pros. So it's an opportunity to talk about what Ken and uh, Jim are involved in. Both of them are involved in ministry type work in a professional setting, and uh, that comes up at 8 o'clock this morning. So, And we also want to give you the time to, uh, well, we want to take the time to introduce you to our pet of the week and also give you uh, the opportunity to uh, consider adopting a pet. So, in order to do that, we do want to bring in Charlotte. Today we have Frederick. Frederick's in pen 10, and he's a one-year-old male. We're not quite sure what mix he is. You probably have to get a doggy DNA kit to figure that out. But he's very sweet and lovable. He really loves treats, and he'll play fetch for you. I think he'd be a great couch potato, too. So come by and meet Frederick. Two four nine forty nine ten is that magic number that you can help out uh, adopt a pet. So we appreciate you considering that. Seven fifty three. Our special guest on uh, Good Morning Enid, Coach Kyle Davis, and we appreciate Coach Davis being with us today. Um, Coach, this is your first year as an assistant with the uh, Plainsman uh, football. Tell us a little bit about your coaching experience, if you will, uh, in Texas. I mean, you wasn't wasn't too far away. No, I, I've the last 17 years or so been down there everywhere from middle school to high school, from big schools to small schools, and uh, just a variety of different types of kids. Uh, spent a lot of time in Title I schools, which I really enjoy those kids as, uh, sure. as, as much as any because there's so much that they need and you can provide for them. And uh, But... Uh, I am tickled to be an Enid because this is as talented a team as I have been around in a long time. Now you'll be coaching, I uh, believe, offensive line? Is yes, that sir. right? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, just tell us real quick, I guess, um, 
practice gets underway next Monday start or what Monday. is it? Start Monday. Okay, because school starts next Wednesday and so it's amazing how quick this calendar moves. It is, and it does, uh, but you know, it, part of the reason that we have a short summer is that the kids work all summer. I mean, it, football's turned into, and again, this is part of the difference that we talked about earlier. Football is now a year-round training game. Nobody ever really gets out of shape. They stay in shape, they work continually, and back when I played professional football, a lot of times you had to get a job in the off season because they just didn't pay you that much money. I, mean, I remember Jim Riley talking about that as well, that they would try to find some kind of job just so they could stay afloat. So We have the opportunity to look at uh, the uh, Plainsman football schedule. I believe we have that on the screen, if, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, you see any familiar schools there, Coach, being from Altus? Oh, I know all of them. I, I haven't used to play uh, Putnam City West, but uh, that's not up there. Uh, both my kids went to Norman High School, actually, and I've got a brother teaching at Edmund Memorial. So. Okay. So it'll be a family reunion on, on oh, October 18th? Absolutely. So, Well, tell us about the Plainsman in preparation, uh, as you saw on the schedule, uh, August 24th, first game with Guthrie. Between now and the 24th, what is your role? Right now, we're putting literally practice schedules together to deal with minute by minute by minute as we go in and start Monday. Uh, so we've been setting practice schedules, what we're going to do, how we set up and install the offense, uh, talking personnel and how we're going to try to use the talent that we have to the best ability. Our, our job as coaches is to put kids in the best position to be successful and for them to have a great experience out of the thing. What is the most... Uh, Trying to get Sarah in here. For, forgive me for just taking over this football conversation. <laughs> but, Coach, what is the most, um, I say, rewarding experience that you have as an educator and also as a coach? It's just seeing the growth and change in kids and know that you have an effect on them. Uh, a lot of kids need a little role model uh, and, and, a, and a little bit of direction. And if we as teachers... You don't get into teaching and coaching because you want to get rich monetarily, but you do get rich with what the kids give you as you try to do your job. And I'm sure the relationships, because years later they still call you coach, even though they're 20-something or 30-something right. or whatever. Well, I still I have to refer to Coach Switzer as Coach Switzer. I, you sure. know, everybody calls him Barry, and I, sure. I just can't. He's Coach Switzer. Right. When you think of the pro football experience, can, can you kind of summarize that? Um, Sarah's a huge football fan, and, uh, but, uh, but seriously, when you, when you think of your pro football experience, how would you summarize that for those of us that are so far from that experience? It's not what it looks like on TV. Um, okay. All the work that goes in behind the scenes, uh, when I think of my football career and think of playing football, my most cherished memories are at the University of Oklahoma because it was fun. It was the result of a lot of work, but the fulfillment of a dream I had and, and I had had since I was five years old. When I got to professional football, um, it was more of a job. It was like if you were enjoying it, you weren't working hard enough. And uh, that was just kind of the Dallas Cowboy way at the time. It, it, it was all work, no play and nose to the grindstone and that just it's still called a game and it should be fun and you should be able to play it for the enjoyment and there wasn't a lot of joy in that game coach kyle davis thanks for being with us Thank this you. morning Enjoyed welcome it. to enid welcome Thank back you. to oklahoma and boomer sooner okay <laughs> well it's time to go so what do we do sarah well, we just want to thank you for joining us, and we hope you have a great weekend and a great Thursday, and that you'll join us next Thursday. Thank you. Make it a great day, everyone.